Welcome back to our virtual celebration of Easter on the Farm 2021 at the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center at Kutztown University. In our final segment for today, we'll join contemporary folk artist Rachel Yoder in her studio for a demonstration of her painting techniques, producing pieces to celebrate Easter traditions and the coming of spring. Guter Tag, Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center's Easter on the Farm. Welcome folks and welcome back to my studio. I'm Rachel Yoder and I'm here in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. I'm an, a working contemporary folk artist in Fractor Traditions and also Hex Science. I love to paint these two things, um, both with traditional signs and motifs and also some original work. So today we're celebrating Easter or Ostrada. Let's get that right. Ostra. 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 Today we're celebrating Ostra, which is the Pennsylvania Dutch word for Easter. And I have been for many, many years throughout all of my research of fractal work and work from the past that other artists and Pennsylvania Dutch people made, I always seem to find the Easter bunny or Ostra Haas. I say that like house, but it's Haas, like Haas and Fefa. Oh, hair and peppers. The Ostra Haas is a motif that I've always wanted to paint. I pinned it a very, very long time ago on my Pinterest board of motifs that I would love to recreate in my own style. So today I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna take an old Fractor piece and reimagine it in my contemporary framework and create it with you all and you can watch the way that my um, process works. And then secondly, I'm gonna make a second piece which is a very exciting piece for me it's an original hex sign. It's a combination of some motifs that I love dearly. So I've made a bunch of different animals, including a grunsaw. I've done crows. I've done pelicans. I've done herrings. But I have not yet done a hare or a bunny. I'm not sure why, because it's one of my favorite animals. So I'm excited to work on these two pieces with you and be able to share my process. So I hope you enjoy, and please let me know if you have any questions. This is pre-recorded, but I will be attending the live stream, and I'll be on the comments, so I'll be able to actually pay attention to the comments if you have any questions while you're watching. Thank you so much for joining me in my studio. Max Gut. So there's a couple things I do before I start the work, is I do a lot of research. Um, I've been working this way for a really long time. I learned um, when I was in art school to research uh, motifs um, for a bunch of different reasons to make sure that you have the the history of the motif and also um, to make sure the context is clear and the message and the reasoning that it was originally created and also to make sure that you don't accidentally appropriate someone else's work or infringe on someone else's copyright. There's a lot of reasons to research. Um, and to be an ethical artist or an ethical designer, you want to always make sure that you're doing these things properly. And if you do use somebody else's work, like a lot of times with hex signs, I'll recreate hex signs from the past. And you always give that artist credit. That's something that's really important and valuable in folk art. Um, passing down the folk art tradition, but also making sure to be ethical and give homage and also credit where credit is due. So these are some of the pieces that inspired me many, many years ago when I was really down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Appropriate timing for that saying. I'm researching different fractor motifs, and these are some that I've pinned. I use Pinterest a lot because it's really nice to do visual research on Pinterest, but you have to watch with Pinterest. A lot of misinformation is attached to some of the images. So I went through and I pinned some um, that I really, really enjoyed. And there's a bunch of articles written about how the Easter Bunny, like the Belschnickel, owes its American roots to the Pennsylvania Dutch. So that's very interesting to me. So I read the whole article and find, and find these types of um, articles really interesting. So with that being said, um, this is the motif that I enjoy the most, and this actual version was from the Pennsylvania Heritage Magazine. They just recently used this um, 
image. So that's actually where I pulled this image. And then I think it's also um, a work that belongs to the Colonial Williamsburg um, Museum there. So I just kind of keep this around as almost like a vision board of inspiration. And then, of course, the three hairs is very um, important in my Celtic and Welsh background. I'm half Pennsylvania Dutch and half Welsh. Um, so this is always running through my mind. How does this connect to this? And how can I create artwork that sort of weaves them together? So that's what I meant by looking at it through a contemporary lens. I'm not just recreating a duplicate of the original. I'm also kind of having these different contemporary thoughts and intersections of my own life that can inform my work. So that's a little bit about the process of finding the images that I use for inspiration. And then of course, um, my wonderful husband, who is an artist as well and a very handy carpenter, is able to create shapes for me, which is very useful and helpful. These are some drawings that I did for a recent logo for a woman named Sarah who runs Iron Rabbit Run. It's um, She's a homesteader and she's a farm farm farmer and she's going to be doing some work in the community so that was a logo that I worked on and some of the drawings that I really enjoyed of hairs and I had my husband take the drawing I made a shape around it and then he was able to cut shapes for me because I really enjoy the 3d shapes I do a lot with the hearts and with groundhogs and owls I have a bunch of shapes sitting around waiting to be painted here's my owl shape more owl more owls. There's a lot. Um, these have been very popular and I really enjoyed making them. They're really nice. This is a, actually a mermaid shape, though it doesn't seem like much now. It will become a mermaid or a Vossar Nyx. And then I have a bunch of circles for hexine shapes as well. And of course, very popular just past is my um, hearts for Valentine's Day. So these are the inspirations for the shape. Here's another piece. Um, so that's kind of what, what I'm gonna work with today. But I wanted to show you that is the process and I really enjoy doing things like this on shapes. So I'm gonna get started. A really quick tour of my work area. I have this really great table from my mom that I work at right in front of my window that looks out into my backyard. Um, of course, the Pennsylvania German Heritage Center's calendar hanging up with important events, some inspiration, some of my children's artwork, my husband's artwork, um, some different paints and brushes. And then, of course, I have a bit of an altar everywhere that I work. I, I create altars. Um, this is an old Johnny Ott piece that a man named Mervyn Smith Jr. gave to me at the Folk Fest. Um, it's, it was broken when he gave it to me, but it's very special to me because Johnny Ott's one of my favorites. And I feel like um, his spirit is here with me when I'm painting, which is very special. And then, of course, a little writing piece that my professor, my drawing professor, Christopher Davidson, wrote. It's very special to me as well and inspires me. Bunch, bunch of brushes and pens and, and of course a hammer a lot of my current work that I'm working on kind of lays on my table surrounding me as part of my inspiration as well to keep um, remembering that it's there and waiting to be worked on um, many 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 shapes that my husband has graciously cut for me waiting to be made lots of hearts some owls of course, some of my favorite artwork is hanging up. I do sales live from my studio now since we don't vend much anymore. This happens to be one of my favorite pieces. Uh, my favorite motif is the rosette, and this is a piece from a project that I did um, in grad school that was on display at the Heritage Center, and it says a hod, which means to preserve. Another favorite and just a bunch of other really fun artwork hanging up from my live sales. We just did a bunch of Valentine's Day sales, Pelican and Piety, that's a real classic, and so on and so forth. Lots of Wasser Nixes, and of course, the Big Mama Hex. So that's a little bit of my studio. If you, there's Boyertown, <laughs> a beautiful day. Lots of children's artwork um, hanging up as well. My kids are beautiful artists. 
um, some flyers from shows I've done. And then if you go to this area, I'm also a, an art teacher at a Montessori school. So there's Maria, um, my, my grandmother Henrietta, my Welsh grandmother over there, and Granny Fisher back there. There's my computer where I do a bunch of research and printing. There's my sewing area. It's a little dark. But yeah, so this, it's a really small little nook, but this is my favorite place to be. This is my attic studio, Ehan, which is a, that is a unicorn. And of course my beautiful wreaths. I have a gorgeous Arbor Vita in the backyard and that's a wreath from it. If you can see that beautiful, beautiful. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is sketch on my wood. So I've made a quick sketch um, quick for you guys <laughs> because it was time lapse. I've made a sketch of my um, my hair in the this, this style fitting on the shape that we made. Actually I decided that I'm going to create a little basket. Let's get going. So I am going to keep with the traditional colors that the original artist used to create this Easter hair and that is red it looks like a gold or yellow ochre green black and that may be it it's a very nice limited color palette which I love and I erased all my pencil marks because pencil shows up under watercolor and I don't want to show that um, usually I wouldn't be so careful with my strokes but since I'm trying to stick to the original design, I'm being much more careful. Um, I always talk to people about fractal work as being gestural versus the hexine work is very graphic. So gestural just means there's lots of movement in the artwork. I need my bifocals. <laughs> um, in the lines, there's lots of movement. There's a feeling of movement of course in the strokes and this is very important and a huge reason why I enjoy Fractor so much is that playful movement and inhibition or lack of inhibition my bad lack of inhibition for stroke and um where you know it's very interesting the kind of artwork that I make because it works on both sides I really enjoy hex signs because they're so graphic and so thought out and planned but then I love Fractor work because it's so gestural and so full of life and movement I just really enjoy the difference and actually enjoy doing both um, they're both both very 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 special to me and I'm going to try and go in here now with just the red marks from the original like sort of um, follow their design a bit and then I'll go in with yellow ochre as well but just thinking of where to place the red ahead of the yellow ochre. So I just love the spirit of fractal work and fractal drawings. Um, some of it is really tight and and really well planned out. Um, the, Schwank, the Schwankfelder has an amazing collection of fractal pieces as well as Vorschrift that is very, very well planned out and thoughtful about each mark. I tend to enjoy the more whimsical and gestural and um, uh, really free, almost like what you would think of as sketching in modern terms within the work. So I like that. The neat thing that I really love about Fractor, um, it's very um, gestural and free. Uh, you know, there's not a pressure that you can mess up, really. It's just, it's really open. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, even if you get paint in the wrong place, you just move on. It becomes part of the work, and that's okay. I love that about it. I think because I am a children's art teacher, I work with a very young population, preschool through sixth grade. Um, I'm always teaching them. In fact, uh, there's a really great book out um, called The Beautiful Oops, 
and I'm always teaching them that, that mistakes are okay and it can just become part of the process. Um, of course, with hexanes, you don't want to make mistakes like that. They're very precise and a very different, probably part of my brain that works on those. Um, and I like that. I like that um, difference. And I like having the freedom and I also like having the restrictions. So it's just neat to observe and compare the different kinds of artwork that our ancestors traditionally made. Um, there's a, a ton of Pennsylvania Dutch folk art that's very, very precise. And then there's also a ton that's very free, organic, gestural. And, you know, I love that. I love the, the relationship between the two kinds of artwork. It's just a nice, um, nice way to limit the work to only a few colors which I really enjoy okay and then let's line this up and make sure his his um, basket is going to be attached to his harness Oops. Give that a little green there. All right. Last color is black. And then this piece is finished. And on to the second piece. So in the original, there's one black egg. When I'm teaching my little young students, we talk a lot about line and pattern. And I guess that's something else that I really love about Proctor is the emphasis of line and pattern. It's really beautiful. Okay, so I'm feeling like this is actually ready to be finished. Let's see, get that brush a little cleaner. And so here's a comparison, this is to dry a bit, um, between the original and my version, the wooden version. So, and there you have it. I love it. I think it came out really sweet. So I'm going to drill some holes in it and rope it up and hang it up and share an image of it at the end of the video. So next up, I'm going to actually be working on um, another rabbit or hair themed piece. Um, but this time it's a little different. It's the three hairs. And as I mentioned before, I did a lot of research on this motif for my friend Sarah's logo for Iron Rabbit Run in Reading. You can check out Sarah. Um, and I found a lot of really cool triple hairs. Um, to be inspiration for us. But I think for today, I'm going to sort of focus one, um, something very simple. So I'm going to make a hex sign with the three hairs, and I think I'm going to make it look sort of like this. But maybe instead of oak, leaf, and acorn, maybe I'll have the moon signs, because the moon is, of course, very important in life. So let's get started. This is going to be fun. I'm going to do it from start to finish here. Um, I may speed up the video at some points. I actually like to have something underneath my my panel. I'm using some Liquitex to prime it because I'm gonna let 
Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to let the wood shine through, which will look very beautiful. It actually wasn't that much. This wood, this pine, very thirsty. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with these materials, what matte medium does is it primes the surface for you to paint on it. In other words, if I just went onto the surface with watercolor, it would just bleed and not in a good way. Sometimes you like a little bloom from watercolor, but not, not for a graphic hex sign. I'm put that in there for a moment and we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna drink some coffee. See you in a few. So a lot of times I'll start my designs actually on the computer in Photoshop and I'll kind of figure out the motif and lay it out on Photoshop. So then I make a printout of that layout. So this is a moon sign border that I've done many, many times. Um, and then I added the three hairs motif to it. My, I make a printout since I want it to be very symmetrical and lay it out symmetrically. Um, and then I'm gonna actually transfer this design onto my piece of wood. So I'm gonna speed up this part of the video so we have enough time to talk about the other part of the process. design on my panel um, and I'm going to go in and put in the details. So the way I work in Photoshop is when I originally did the moon phases hex sign, I actually took a photograph of it, then I put it in Photoshop, clean it up, and then it became, it became kind of like a guide for me or um, a template. Um, a lot of artists will do that, especially folk artists, if they sell a lot of a certain motif, which I have sold a ton of this um, moon phases motif which is very cool. I love it very much. Um, the moon is very special to many of my collectors. And then I'll just go and clean it up a bit with my compass. Make sure the lines are nice and cleaned up. And I have one more on the outer edge. So, it's all cleaned up, and now I can get started inking and painting. Oh, one other thing I need to do, that's right, is the ones up here actually got cut off a bit, so... This thing is great. Um, I learned about this when I was student teaching to become an art teacher. It's called a safety compass, and I used it with my students and still use it with my students all the time. It's called a safety compass, and it's nice to use because it won't hurt them. And I use it a lot with smaller circles. So see how the circle with just the printer, it got cut off. So I'm going to just kind of sketch the area that it's supposed to be and then sketch where I think the middle is, then you line the middle up with your safety compass. And then you find um, the dot that's closest to that. So I'm gonna go with this one. My pencil's not really sharpened, so I'm gonna change that. Um, 
is the old-fashioned way, folks. Young people don't do this, but I'm sure my older friends watching will remember sharpening pencils that way. I actually learned from my drilling professor, who I mentioned before, Christopher Davison. So we have a beautiful circle there, and I'm just going to make the outer circle as well. And then same thing down at the bottom. We've got an, um, an unfinished circle. I want to make sure to keep it uniform though, to use the same, the same hole. So I'm actually going to keep my pencil in it so I don't forget which one it is. Okay. So we're going to line it up with the middle. All right. And then we have the one Inner. Okay, very good. So there we have it. Whoops. My post it notes. Okay, so we're good to go now. And so I just always give myself kind of cheat sheet. This is going to be black. This is going to be white or clear. Um, this is black. Um. So these will be black, white, and black. All right. So I am going to get started with my painting. And I think I'm going to actually speed up this video since I'm probably running out of time. So we have our design and now we're going to get painting. It's actually just going to be black and wood. So it's going to be very simple. And I'm going to get painted or painting and see you in a few minutes when it's all done. My triple, my triple hairs is finished. I'm just gonna probably do a little bit of touch up. And then once it's all dry, I'm gonna erase my pencil marks, put some varnish on it and drill a hole and I'll hang it up. And then I'll show you guys how it looks hanging up at the end of the video. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint and a mock scoot. Also, you can find me on social media at Rachel Yoder Art. Also on Instagram, Rachel Yoder Art, and on Etsy, Rachel Yoder Art, if you're interested. Have a wonderful day and happy Easter. Max good or Astara. Well, folks, that half hour went by so quickly, and I'm not just talking about the speed of the video. 
it was so nice to sit down with you all again and share my studio and my process with you. And I hope to all of you that you have a blessed Ostra. 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 And whether you spe celebrate Ostra, Easter, or you celebrate Ostara, have a blessed holiday and looking forward to the spring and all of the beautiful plant life coming back to us. And everyone have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Max Gut! Cultural programming for this virtual celebration of Easter on the Farm 2021 is brought to you by the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center at Kutztown University, the hub of Pennsylvania German culture and language. Visit us online at www.kutztown.edu backslash pgchc. Thank you to all of our viewers, supporters, and friends. Miatzala Grosdank zu alle unser Guka, Unterstütze und Freund. Max gut.